So, put those guys back in there. Don't lose his head. That's the conquest of Gaul. You got 60 Kel warriors and 30 Roman legionaries with the score. Then we have Imperial Roman Army starter set with 60 plastic Imperial Romans, 20 plastic Imperial Guards, 20 Roman veterans, 24 plastic Roman auxiliaries. So quite a bit of uh, Romans. You got shields, decals, pretty cool. So there's a quick army for you right there. We take these guys and I think I'll bring them over. <sighs> there we go. Alright, so we got them up there. Uh, once the holidays are over, I'm going to start framing these walls so all this stuff will be moved over. And I'll, I'll frame it so I'll be able to clean up some of this mess. So what do we got here? We got this, we got Renegade. Okay, so we've got Imperial Knights Renegade. We got Space Hulk. We've got some old Chaos Iron Warriors. And we got some new stuff. And they shall know no fear. Except for your wallet. Games Workshop. Good God, man, I'll tell you. Games Workshop. I remember you could get two or three Land Raiders for 30 bucks. Now, one figure, one lone figure, costs that much. Talk about killing the hobby. All right, this is the Tromveret of the Imperium. Okay, so it's got, this is actually, I, I like this, I picked this up. Do you got Celestine with her uh, Angel God there, and I really, really dig this chick right here. That was pretty neat. They, I nah, don't particularly care for the Mechanicum, but, uh, yeah. I thought this was pretty neat. Kind of got that stink, steampunkish attitude thing going on. Yeah, I thought she was really cool. So you got um, Saint Celestine with her two sisters here, Eleanor and Guinevere. Then you have this Belisarius call from the Mechanicum. And then you got this Inquisitor Grayfax, which I thought was outstanding. You know, so that wasn't too bad of a, a deal. And then, of course... Um, you got Robert Gulliman, the Grandmaster of Aldous, and my favorite was uh, Cypher. Um, so you get the Primark, Cypher, and look at the price tag on this thing. $90, $90. That's $30 a fig. It's insane. 90 bucks. And... What I usually do is I buy stuff and then when I go to the hobby store they give you a discount. So I end up probably picking up for like 80 bucks or 70 bucks or something. Then we have Space Hulk. And we got an old Space Hulk right there. Look at that. 
We have a new Space Hulk, an old Space Hulk, and a Russian Dreadnought. The Vyag. Which I know I was building this. I haven't finished it, so you know what? I'm going to put this on my workbench so I can finish it up. Dreadnoughts. As a matter of fact, I picked up a new book. Right here. War at Sea in the Ironclad Age by Richard Hill. Um, I haven't really even looked at it yet. Um... American Civil War. The War at Sea in the Ironclad Age by Richard Hill. Let's get to the good stuff. Technical and Strategic Context. The Black Sea. Look at this ship. Pretty cool. I love sailing vessels. Is that a torpedo? Yeah. It's an early whitehead torpedo being hoisted after a trial run. The locomotive torpedo employed a system of depth and directional control invented by Robert Whitehead in the late 1860s, which in, essential, which is in essentials continues today. Early models were, however, very limited range and slow speed. Kinburn, 17 October 1855. That is the warrior preserved at the historic dock in Portsmouth, England. Restoration of the ship was carried out at Hot Hoddlepool between 1979 and 1987, and the ship has since been presented in the public in a fully authentic state. Well, that's pretty cool. The Monitor, combat between the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia in Hampton Roads. Oh, look at that. That is cool. The only major success for the Ram was as a weapon of war in the ironclad age. The Austrian flagship Ferdinand Max rams and sinks the Italian battleship Rede Italia at the Battle of Lisa. The aftermath of a spectacular ramming incident in 1893 when the HMS Camperdown rammed and sank the British Mediterranean Fleet flagship Victoria during a maneuver. This would now be known as Blue on Blue. The Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Sir George Tyron, was lost in the incident with 357 other personnel. Wow. The HMS Devastation, the first massless battleship designed by Sir Edward Reed. While her breastwork layout and low freeboard might have made her unsuitable for ocean fighting, she was well adapted to defense and attack of naval bases, which figured prominently in the 1870s strategy. Hmm. Pretty cool. This is the Continental Navy's quickly fall Britain and France into ironclad technology. The Spanish broadside and ironclad frigate Numancia, built in France, was in service by 1863, and she figured prominently in the turbulent years of the South American republics. It was the first ironclad to circumnavigate the world. Leave it to the Spanish, huh? <laughs> the French battleship Henry IV. Russian battleship, Georgi, okay guys, you pronounce it, Georgi Pedrodonosius, yeah, okay, the U.S. battleship, Connecticut, the German battleship, Schwaben,
This is the Monarch, the HMS Monarch. Another battle. This is Sleeborg, 8, 10 August 1855. This looks like a little torpedo boat, huh? This is experimental vessel Turbania below in the mid 1890s. She caused a sensation at the 1897 Diamond Jubilee Review. Steam turbines, it was soon the prime movers even of major warships. The HMS Calypso, 1900. The Russian Rorik class was regarded as fast, menacing, which required commerce from other powers. It's like a tip HMS on it, a torpedo, a torpedo boat destroyer of 1894, originally conceived as a counter to raiding torpedo boats, destroyers soon carried torpedoes themselves. They were the subject of intense competition between rival shipbuilders who strove for speed and armament, often at the expense of structural integrity. This is a spa torpedo launch. The attack and defense on harbors. Wow. The training ship Britannia in the 1890s. Officers' training was scientifically orientated and rigorous, but emphasized too strongly the absorption of facts and figures rather than encouraging leadership, initiative, and intellectual skills. The British Mediterranean Fleet, in full glory in the 1890s, the appearance of the HMS Alexandria, the White Hull flagship, uh, epitomizes the spit and polish and glamour of that ever. Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee Review in 1897 was an occasion for a display not only of loyalty by her fleet, but of its latent power and acknowledged influence. The reputation of the British ta was at its peak. Davies of Sea Warfare. Look at that. God, I wish they would like do like at least one page and not split them up. Especially when you're doing a painting. It's like, ugh, really? How aggravating. This is the HMAS HM Australia. French Navy. Old Ape. American Civil War. Seizure of two Confederate agents from the British mail steamer Trent by the USS San Juancinto caused such resentment in Britain. Republic opinion at first tended to favor the Confederacy. The rift between Britain and the Union government took some time to heal. Ironclads. Mississippi Campaign near Vicksburg. The Confederate Arkansas and the Union Carondelet are in furious battle with frequent attempts to ram each other. Such actions were generally inconclusive, but Union, the Union grip on the river steadily tightened. It's pretty neat, huh? Fight between the CSS Alabama and the USS Kersage off Sherbrooke, 19 June 1864. 
Alabama had had two years hard sea going while Chris Arch was well supplied and prepared. Alabama sank after some hours hot after some hours of hot action. A lurid depiction of the closing stages of the Battle of the Mobile Bay, the feared Confederate ironclad Tennessee is finally surrounded and overwhelmed by superior Union forces, which have broken through the fixed defenses. So that's got to be her right there. Navy's in Imperial Expansion. Uh oh. We don't teach this in history anymore, do we, boys? Commander Lord Charles Bursford and the command and the commandeered river steamer Safi goes up the Nile to rescue Gordon's would be re Gordon's would be rescuer, Colonel Sir Charles Wilson, in February of 1885. The jingoism of the Caucasian was offset by a display of genuine courage and resourcefulness. British had a lot of balls, though, didn't they? they were very brave people.